Welcome to the first lesson of the complete course to using Playwright for cross-browser automation testing. Playwright is by the same people that originally built Puppeteer, which is the key API to automate Chrome using Node.js APIs. The key differentiator for Playwright is that it supports multiple evergreen browsers. Currently, it supports Chromium, which is a browser engine used by Google Chrome and Microsoft Edge, WebKit, which is used by Apple Safari, and Firefox, which is used by Mozilla. This makes Playwright significantly more useful than Puppeteer as you can use the same automation code to ensure that a web application or library works on multiple engines. In this lesson, we will set up a Node.js developer environment for working with Playwright, look at some of its key concepts and test a web application on multiple engines. So let's go. We start off with an empty directory and initialize a new package.json with npm init minus y. Now you can use Playwright with just plain JavaScript, but in order to give you an enhanced developer experience, we'll quickly set up TypeScript by installing TypeScript and TS node. And then when the installation is complete, we go ahead and use this installed TypeScript compiler to initialize a new TS config, enabling source maps so that we can debug the TypeScript source code, specify source as our input directory and lib as our output directory. Next, we go ahead and open it up within our IDE. Now we'll put all our source code under source index.ts and just to show that it's all working now, we'll go ahead and lock out hello world. Now in order to execute this TypeScript code, we will open up the terminal and run npx ts node passing in the path to our file. And you can see that it works as expected. Now in order to use Playwright, the only thing that you need is the Playwright npm package. Let's go ahead and install that. And this will bring in all the code that we need as well as the binaries for all the browsers that this particular version of Playwright supports. Now in order to use Playwright in our source code, we go ahead and import the Playwright package as Playwright into a namespace. Now a lot of the code from Playwright is asynchronous and it works on top of promises. So it's really easy to go ahead and create an async function and then invoke that immediately, allowing us to use the await keyword when working with Playwright APIs. Now the first step when working with Playwright is to go ahead and launch the browser. We get the instance of the launch browser by awaiting playwright.browsername.launch. You can see that it supports a few browsers. We'll go ahead and test with Chromium first. Now launching a browser is a performance expensive operation. So Playwright supports creating browser sessions with different feature sets using the concept of contexts. We can go ahead and create a new context by calling the new context method of a launched browser instance. Now to interact with a web application, we need to create a page. A page is similar to a tab in Chrome. Similar to how we created a context by calling new context on a browser, we create a page by calling new page on a context. Now with the page object, we can carry out actions to interact with our web application. But as a final step, we should always close the browser Otherwise, the Node.js process will be left hanging as it is waiting for the browser to exit. Now, there are lots of APIs on top of the page object, but a key one is GoTo with which you can go ahead and navigate to a particular URL. As an example, we will go ahead and navigate to whatsmyuseragent.org, which will show us what our browser will look like to a web application. We'll go ahead and save a screenshot of what the web page will look like to chromium.name under the output directory as a PNG file. Now let's go ahead and execute this TypeScript file in the terminal using the same command that we used before, which was npx ts node source index.ts. And once it has finished executing, we should see the output within the output directory. So let's go ahead into the file tree and navigate to that directory. And you can see this chromium.png appeared and this website thought that we were headless Chrome. Now, as we mentioned in the beginning, one of the key features of Playwright is that it supports multiple browsers. So let's go ahead and instead of directly using playwright.chromium, import the different browsers into different variables from the Playwright namespace import, and then carry out these actions for all of these browsers using a for off loop. So for each browser type of this array of Chromium, WebKit and Firefox,
we will go ahead and carry out the same steps and now all that we need to do is to replace instances of playwright.chromium with browser type. Now let's go ahead and execute this code once again in the terminal using TS node and now we should see three files within the output directory and indeed we have a separate file for Chromium, Firefox and WebKit. Firefox got detected as Gecko Firefox and WebKit got detected as Safari. Now a key thing to point out is that I don't have Firefox installed on my Mac. As you can see, if I open up Spotlight and search for it, nothing shows up. And the reason why this code still works is because Playwright ships with browser engine versions of all of these browsers, so you don't have to have them installed on your machine. These are being brought in by the npm package and used by the npm package. Now this also means you don't have to deal with any browser version API incompatibilities. You simply install the latest version of Playwright and you're off to the races. Now one more great thing about Playwright is that it is headless by default. That is you do not need to have a graphical user interface on the machine that is going to execute this code. For example, you can run this safely on your build server. Now if you want to have the user interface of the browser visible to you during development, you can pass the headless false argument to the launch method of the browser type. Now let's go ahead and execute this code with headless false. First up, Chromium pops up, as you can see over here. Next up will be WebKit, as you can see over here. And finally, Firefox, as you can see over here. Now you could also set up your IDE to go ahead and pause this application to view the browser at a particular state. I already have VS Code set up to debug this code using steps from a separate lesson here on YouTube and I'll leave a link to that in the description. Now let's go ahead and build it in VS Code, create a breakpoint right after the go to navigation and then press F5 to launch this application in debug mode. First up Chrome opens, navigates and then VS Code stops right before the call to screenshot. Now at this point, we can go ahead and interact with Chrome. For example, open up the developer tools and see what's going on with our application in case of any issues. If I continue, next up will be WebKit. Once more, VS Code pauses. I can go to the browser now and inspect the application to debug any issues within Safari using Safari Web Inspector to go ahead and inspect different elements within the DOM. And now if I continue, Firefox will open up, VS Code will pause, and now I can go ahead and use the Firefox developer tools to debug any issues that the web application might be facing within Firefox. And that's all you need to get started with Playwright. Be sure to smash that like and subscribe for more content like this. And I'll see you in the next one.